everyone and welcome to this uh, short uh, introduction to how to load a CSV file into your Jupyter Notebook. Now I am learning this as well um, but I just wanted to share with you a little bit of what I've learned so far and I know that some people had issues just uh, loading a simple file into the notebook so I just wanted to share with you how it is done properly. Okay, so the first thing that you want to do is to make sure that you know where the file that you're going to work with is actually located. In this case here, I have this file called flight underscore data, and it's sitting in this um, folder, which has a long path, but it doesn't really matter because I know where it is. And all I wanted to do is to select that path by clicking on the bar here and using control C, or you can also click the right button of the mouse and then copy. Control C, Control V, copy and paste, same idea. So now I have that path into my clipboard. Okay, so the next thing that you want to do is to run your Anaconda prompt. Now I have it on my desktop here as a shortcut, but you can go to your start menu, assuming that you have downloaded the Anaconda uh, ID environment completely. And you can scroll down here and find the Anaconda 3 and open up the menu and go to Anaconda Prompt. So let's go in there. Maximize the screen. As a tip, if it's too small like it is right now, control on the keyboard, control and hold it, and use the ball and the mouse to scroll up and you make this bigger. A couple of things you wanted to know here. CD. CD is the command to actually go into the directory that you want to go into. CD backslash goes all the way to the C, to the root. Uh, CD space um, it will take you to the directory or the folder that you want to be in when you're running your Jupyter Notebook. Now, if you recall, I selected that long path of my folder and I copy that. So I'm going to go to my black screen and on the Anaconda prompt, CD space, I'm going to paste that entire path. So you can see here that saying C, use Ramon, blah, 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 all the way to this week two, enter. Now I am into that folder. So once again, CD backslash, you are all the way back to the base, back to the root to C. Another little thing that I use sometimes is CLS. It will clear the screen. CLS. It clears everything if you get a little if you get a little bit confusing where you are. So CD space control V, which is the path of that folder. Enter. Now I am in there. Just to check D I R DIR enter. It just shows you the contents of that same folder. It's the same place, same thing. It's just another way to check if the file that you're going to work with in Jupyter Notebook is actually in that folder. Uh, let me check right there. Flight data CSV, good to go. CLS, you don't have to do this. It's just my OCD clears the screen. I am in there. I know my file is in there. Now I'm going to run Jupyter space notebook. Jupyter notebook, hit enter. It may take a, a few seconds for the system to load it up. Anaconda will bring up your Jupyter notebook in your preferred browser. I have Firefox here. And this first screen, again, is just showing everything that is in that directory or that folder that I'm going to be working with. And once again, here it is, flight data CSV, comma, separated values. All right, so from here, you want to hit new, Python 3 notebook. A new tab is going to be open, and I have a brand new, ready-to-go, clean notebook. First thing I'm going to do, untitle one. Click there once if you want to rename this. If you don't want to rename it, it's up to you. I'm going to rename it uh, Test Flight Data uh, Notebook. 
rename. Okay, the first thing you wanted to do is to import pandas as pd. Shift enter or run is the same thing. And there you go, we are good to go. The second thing you want to do is to put that ver the file, sorry, the CSV file into a variable. Just to make things a little easier. File name, I'm just calling the file name, equals, what's the name of the file? The file, flight underscore data dot CSV. Now, this should be within quotes. Double quotes. You can use singular or double, same thing. I just want to make sure that this is actually the exact name of the file. Uh, yes, flight data CSV, all lowercase, good to go. File name equals in brackets, flight data CSV, shift enter. It looks like it worked. Now I'm going to use pandas to read that file. Uh, I'm going to create another variable, a data frame that I'm going to call df equals pd dot read underscore csv open brackets file name. Now, I did not use the quotations marks here because this is a variable. I don't have to. I've already put this inside that variable, so I don't need to do it again. Shift enter. It looks like it's okay. Now, I don't really know. So let's run a few functions here to make sure that this file has been uploaded properly. Well, I kind of know it has because it didn't have a, an error message. But let's make sure that this is there and let's understand a little bit about this file. DF, my data frame, which is my file that I asked pandas to read, dot info brackets shift enter okay now I have some information about the file I have two columns one is called drop height the other one is called flight time both have 17 known no no zeros and no nans and ans these are all values and I also know that because I know that this is an integer and I know that this is a float. So these are integers, whole numbers, and these are float numbers, or numbers with decimals. That's good. So if I want to have a quick representation of my data frame here, df.head, and again, I'm just making sure that the file has been uploaded, and I want to see what's in there. Shift and enter. There we go. By default, Jupyter Notebook will bring you the first five rows. Now, remember that the Jupyter Notebook will start indexing your rows starting from zero. So one, two, three, four, five rows indexing from zero to four. I can also specify how many I want to see. If I want to see the first three rows, put the number three in there, shift enter, and there we go, first three rows. I can also see the last rows using the df.tail. Now remember the df is actually my data frame, it's my variable here that pandas is reading my file on. So tail, let's say I want to see the last five rows, for example, shift enter, and there we go. I had 17 values, and if I start from the last one, because it's been indexed since starting from zero, it only makes sense that I see 16, 15, 14, 13, 12. So DF head, DF tail, uh, DF info, and, and there you have it. This is how you actually import a CSV file into the Jupyter Notebook using Pandas. And from here on, of course, you can do all sorts of things. You can do your statistical analysis, you can create graphs and visualization. Of course, you will need different libraries for that, but I just wanted to share with you how to simply load a CSV file from scratch uh, into the Jupyter Notebook. Now, this is a nice and clean file, but of course, you may be uploading files that have all sorts of 
no values and things that are missing, objects, strings, integers, floats, you name it. This is a very simple example just to show you how it's done. I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope to see you next time. Thank you.